everyone. I'm Dr. Zema, clinical psychology specializing in transgender care. Welcome to my channel. This is another one of my Q&A Mondays where I answer direct and specific questions that you all have. So if you do have direct and specific questions that is um, close to your situation and you would like to get feedback on, please comment below in the comment section or feel free to email it directly to me. My information is on my channel bio. You can also snatch it off my website. Website is easydoctorzphc.com, just like the name of this channel. Having said that, uh, keep in mind, your questions cannot be diagnostic because I cannot answer diagnostic questions. So they have to be general to be able to generalize to all, but get obviously very specific to your current situation. So this is a great way to get feedback on specific specific things that have been bothering you. As always, I have blocked out everybody's name for privacy. There is going to be timestamps downstairs. Uh, downstairs. Uh, down below for all of you to uh, uh, see um, in terms of which subjects you want to jump around with. Um, and also, if I came across your question, you would know that I snatched it into my Q&A folder by letting you know that I will answer it in Q&A. If you posted a question and it's been a while and you haven't gotten a response from me, please repost it. And I apologize if I have not seen it. Having said that, let's get started. So first question for today. Hello, thank you for the latest video about older transgender people who have older parents still living. I did a little short where I talked about uh, if you are older or you are uh, obviously trans adult and you're still living with parents or have parents living with you, whatever situation is, uh, and you can't come out because of that. So this is what this individual refers to. I'm in that category. Unfortunately, I feel like I hit rock bottom and feel like I'm all, I, I am about to do something that I truly regret or do something different. Please don't. Let's not be impulsive. I need to transition transition and be happy and comfortable in my own. You absolutely do. Need to be happy. I 100% agree. I'm in my forest and deserve to be happy. Yes, you do. Please tell me how I should handle my situation. Parents will not even let me go on hormones. Yes, I live with them because I help them around the home with things. Okay, so this is a great question. So you're 40 years old, you're living with your parents, or maybe your parents living with you, which by the way, not that uncommon. A lot of people are taking care of their parents. A lot of times this cultural where some cultures are predisposed to taking care of their parents. So here you are and um, your situation is complicated because you, um, you help them around the house with things. And also, they're not letting you go on hormones. So first first thing I want to address, you said, please tell me what I should do. I'm not going to tell you what you should do. I'm going to give you some ways of thinking about your situation because you need to decide what you should do. I want you to be an active participant in your life. I want you to take control of your life um, versus life controlling you. Remember, if we don't actively participate in our lives, then life is going to be that active participant and it's going to make things happen for you. And then you're going to end up calling it fate. And I don't want that to happen for you. Having said that, let me give you some ideas to ponder. One, you said that your parents won't even let you go on hormones. What does it mean? Does that mean that you are so dependent on your parents by living with them that you're also financially dependent and they're leveraging that financial dependence by telling you that you can't go on hormones because they will not finance it? If that's the situation, is there any way at all for you possible to earn your own income? If you can't leave the house because you have to take care of your parents 24-7, can you start looking for some opportunities where you can earn income online? There's a lot of opportunities today. A lot of people are working from home. So is that something that's even possible for you? If you have zero income, and that's not even possible for you, if you live in the United States, can you apply for state-funded insurance such as medical? Is that something possible for you so that way you can get access to gender-affirming care? If your parents are not letting you go on hormones, not because you're financially dependent on them, let's say you financially have resources of your own to be able to go on hormones, but they are basically telling you, you can't do it um, because I'm telling you not to do it, then I encourage for you to think about that because you as 40 year old have to start thinking about your own decision making and you have to also start thinking about your well-being and your health. Your parents will die one day. Sorry to be bare of shitty news, 
all of our parents will die one day. Some people who are watching this had already had their parents passed away. I don't want you to live your life based on the projections of what your parents want you to be so that one day when they're gone, you suddenly realize that now you have to live life for yourself and it's too late or too much time has passed. I don't want you to feel that. That is a painful feeling. So if you feel like you can't go on hormones because your parents are now telling you not to, I think this is a good time to think about establishing boundaries, asserting yourself and stepping in your own. Because like you said, you do deserve to be happy. I 100% agree that you do deserve to be happy. You're not the only person in this type of situation. I don't believe life gives a situation that are completely makes us stuck. I feel there's always a way to unstuck ourselves, even though it may not seem so. In the very least, you have control how you feel about the situation. So I really encourage you just to think about it, see what you can do. Can you start making your own income? If the financial is at, at stake here, can you also start thinking about uh, perhaps breaking yourself away from parents in some shape or form while still being able to take care of them? So start maybe broadening your mind and think about how you can look at your situation differently. How can you look at your situation from a different angle? So hopefully this helps um, and I wish you all the best. Next question. Time for me to post the question. Good. I'm glad time has come for anybody who's thinking about posting. Please post the questions. Uh, chances are if you're thinking about something, Somebody else can really benefit from hearing me answer your question. Uh, a lot of times when I answer these questions, um, the answers are so relevant to so many other avenues in our lives that it becomes really all around encompassing relevant. So please post your questions. If privacy is an issue, email them to me. And as I said, I'm always very mindful about all of your privacy. So I make sure I block out your information. I'm trans male to female on hormones, and I no longer really look male or female. Example, I have well-developed breasts and full male pattern baldness. I'm not hyper-feminine. I restrict use of makeup to special occasions. I wear a wig mostly when I'm outside, and if I'm seen, I am not usually misgendered, even when talking. I get uh, misgendered on the phone a lot. Ah, oh, that sucks. Uh, so, and the cause is obvious. My voice has been affected by testosterone. I have had therapy for this and it hasn't worked out. And that's because I do not have sufficient motivation to practice modifying my voice. Sorry to hear that. It also is the, the case that my dysphoria doesn't really extend to my voice, but I do get annoyed um, when being called Mr. X over the phone. How can I develop the motivation needed to practice changing my voice? I do feel the need to do that for personal safety, if not, if for no other reason. Great question. So. Uh, multiple levels in your question. So um, one, uh, you always say, this is very banal, but we we'll always say that uh, if your voice matters to you and you are trying to get your voice to a fully passable range, the best test is a phone test because that way people who are gendering you, all they have to go off is your voice. So for you, you get gendered fine, in public, on the phone, you struggle because people misgender you. But you say that it doesn't really give you sufficient dysphoria to motivate you. And the reason why the voice therapy for you in the past failed is because you were not motivated enough to do it. So how do you get motivated enough to do now to work on your voice? I have bad news for you. You're not going to get motivated enough to work on your voice. I will tell you one. Why? Uh, one, even if you had sufficient reasons, sufficient reasons to what in, uh, somebody else might say, feel motivated to work on your voice. Let's say you had sufficient reason to work on your voice because it does give you a lot of dysphoria. It makes you very uncomfortable. It doesn't match up with your goals. Even if you had all the sufficient reasons to work on your voice, you're still not going to be motivated. You're also not going to get motivated to work on your voice for one of the biggest main reasons is because when we start working on our voice, it is tedious, it is annoying. And hearing ourselves speak starts to bring up a lot of other elements. Oh my God, I sound cheesy. Oh my God, I sound fake. Oh, the imposter starting to come up. All of those things. Working on the voice is not the most comfortable thing. So what I'm trying to say is that there's nothing motivational about this to begin with. Another thing that you got to keep in mind is that we as a whole society have got motivation completely backwards. We are conditioned to believe that when motivation comes, we are supposed to do A, B, C, D, E. So this camera, if anybody, by the way, knows how to 
fix the flush out, please let me know. Motivation. When we think about motivation, we are taught that, oh, you will be able to do A, B, C, D, E when you finally feel motivated. That's not motivation. The real truth behind motivation is not, it's, it's not something that gets you started. It is something that happens in the middle of a process that propels you forward and keeps motivating you to move forward. For example, you start working on your voice. You're not going to be motivated. But guess what? You start feeling more and more confident. You start really embracing yourself. That's going to give you motivation to move forward. Initially, do not expect to be motivated. Voice therapy. Voice therapy is, uh, it can take a long time. It doesn't take a long time because voice therapy in of itself takes a long time to get you to the range that you should be at, whatever the range is, by the way, for you. But it takes a long time because after you get to the range and you're done with voice therapy with a vocal coach, then you have to practice again and again and again all of the time to get to the point in your headspace where you are no longer thinking about it and it's happening automatically for you and you're not hyper thinking about it. I did a... Um, video about it why if you voice is an issue you must start and i'm gonna link it below too um and i do encourage for you to watch it but you're not gonna get motivated for you it's not giving you enough dysphoria to be bugged by it but you're starting to think that you really should work on it because it's um if for no other reason like you said for personal reason i would encourage for you instead of waiting for motivation Try to commit to yourself. Make this something that you really commit to yourself. Make it something as a goal. Make it something that you will do for a whole year. Uh, you owe this to yourself. Feel like you owe this to yourself. So try to do this for a year um, or longer if you want, depending on how much the testosterone has affected your voice, how much of practice you will need. But I really encourage you to do it either you know start working again with a voice therapist if you can if not there's great resources there's trans voice lessons online on youtube which is a phenomenal resource there's all the other resources so i really encourage for you to just commit to yourself but sorry i can't tell you how to motivate yourself because it's bullshit you're not going to be motivated um if anybody watching this and want to share how you got motivated to practice voice please do but uh, i personally don't think it's, it's a motivation exists people just do it because they have to there's a lot of things in tradition a lot of you have to do because you just have to do it because it, doing it will bring you closer to your goal and then once you start doing you start getting closer to your goal seeing that happening is a motivation so hopefully that helps um and um yeah i hope you you can commit to yourself next question Glad to see a new video. Thank you for making such helpful content. You are very welcome. I would like to hear your opinion, your opinion, experience about homosexual trans people, about trans people's sexual orientation in general, and about trans people's gender expression, especially when it's different from expected from their desired gender. Let me clarify. I identify as trans male. I even have kind of severe dysphoria, but I also identify with femininity much more than this masculinity. I don't want to change my gender role in society, but I want to change the way people see me from female feminine to male feminine. If one or all of this are already on the channel, I apologize for bothering you, not bothering, and I don't believe I ever spoke about this on my channel, so this is a great question. Love from Russia and love right back to you as uh, one Russian to another Russian. It's it's been a long time since I've been in Russia. I always tell my husband if I go to Russia and if they find out what I do for a living, I either will be, you know, it'll be like, Dr. Z, where's Dr. Z? Went to Russia, never came back. Or uh, I'll be uh, in prison. Uh, all jokes aside, not funny at all. Russia is very anti-trans, anti-homophobic, uh, just just anti a lot of human rights and it's, it's horrific. Uh, one of the reasons why my parents uh, immigrated from Russia. So let's let's focus on your question. What what is my opinion about homosexual trans people? My opinion. I'm not sure what you're asking here. Uh, my opinion in what sense? Uh, what exactly are you asking? So uh, trans guys who are sexually attracted to man uh, or another other trans guys uh, their sexual orientation is gay uh, trans women who are attracted to women or to other trans women their sexual orientation is lesbian um, 
what I think about it, I think nothing of it. I think to each its own. I think that it is personal. I think everybody has a right to their sexuality. Um, I think sexuality is normal, is natural, is healthy. Uh, being attracted to the same bodies, different bodies, the same gender, different genders, I think that's all normal and natural. Um, as long as it is consensual and legal, I think, you know what, whatever rocks your world, if rocking your world is is hugging a shoe and being harassed by it, knock yourself out. It's your personal private life. Um, we're, you know, it's amazing how a lot of people who um, are very preaching about heterosexuality, you'd be amazed what's actually happening inside their head spaces when it comes to their sexual fantasies. So to each its own, I don't think anything about it. I think that uh, trans people, uh, homosexual trans people are just like homosexual cis people. That's your sexuality and that's about that. Um, of course, your sexuality does change uh, for some people uh, once they start transition, not because of the hormones that a lot of people think, but your sexuality tends to change because now this authentic part of you that stayed dormant is coming to the surface and you are for the first time being allowed to express and explore your sexuality in relationship to your own gender identity, to your authentic gender identity. And as a result, you may find out that, oh, wow, I'm actually as my authentic self attracted to this or attracted to that. And that's also nat natural and normal. But to answer your question about gender expression and gender role, um, because you say that you want to be seen as, as a man uh, in terms of your gender, but in terms of your essence and in terms of your role, you identify you have carried a lot of feminine qualities. So I look at gender separate from, um, from this internal type of qualities. So I look at this internal qualities the way Carl Jung, for example, looked at it as divine masculine and divine feminine. It has nothing to do with religion, by the way, but this is the quality that every human being, um, uh, every human being pretty much has to a lesser certain degree. Some people have a more balance of feminine and masculine. Some people have a little bit less of a balance. People have a little bit more masculine to feminine ratio. Some people have more feminine to masculine ratio. My husband is example, a cis man who is um, a ridiculous amount of feminine uh, qualities. Um, that's normal. That's healthy. Uh, that's who you are. You have to be true and honest to who you are. Your role and your expression does not have to match your gender. Your gender is internal core of how you feel about yourself. Your expression, gender expression, is how you want the world to see you in relationship to your gender or just in relationship to gender or in relationship to yourself. How do you want to show up in the world? Your role, your gender role is then in terms of stereotypical or just gender roles that feel more connected to you. How do you want to express yourself and navigate yourself in the world? This is a great question because I kid you not, I had a lot of people struggle with this. I have a lot of people, especially for some reason I see, well, no, this is not true. I would say it's probably equal across the board. I seen trans masculine guys who would feel just the way you do. Um, do I have to not give up all my feminine qualities? Or sometimes uh, I have trans guys who say that they are very appalled uh, about toxic masculinity and they're afraid to be seen um, within the scope of toxic masculinity. And you don't have to be. Toxic masculinity is completely separate, different thing. Um, you have to not only embody, but externalize those qualities in order to even be able to possess those things. I also see... This is quite a bit. I also see individuals who were uh, feminists uh, in the past, in a sense of being very heavily involved in the feminist movement and advocacy for feminism. And once they started to transition uh, to uh, trans masculine, uh, started to feel like now it's in a conflict. It's not in a conflict. You can be a feminist as a trans guy. Shit, you should be a feminist as a man, period. We all should be feminists because feminist is a great thing. If you're not for equal rights for women, um, then that's kind of problematic for me because um, I think it's 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 only right for women to have equal rights, uh, just like everybody else should have a right to equal rights. So feminism, I think, should be for everybody, um, to be honest with you. So don't feel conflicted. If you see yourself as a feminine man, be a feminine man. 
if you show yourself more masculine man, be more masculine man. The most important thing is for you to um, get a hold of who you are and hold on to it without letting society and everybody around you dictate what you ought to be. And that's a difficult thing to do. One, figuring out who you are is in of itself a challenge. Two, once you figure out and you become that person, holding on to that is hard. It's hard. It's like a tree. You have to plant your roots of your ownership to yourself so deep into the ground that no matter what everybody says, they can't sway you. They can't make you flowers. They can't make you fall. You're so rooted into who you are. We all need to be rooted into who we are because there's a lot of voices. I always say there's too many cooks in the kitchen. And you know what? Too many cooks in the kitchen are going to create one shitty meal because everybody has an opinion. So be um, confident in yourself, assert yourself, and a feminine man, I think that's wonderful. I think that's great. I think we need more feminine men. We need more people balanced in this life. Um, so find who you are and hold on to it. So that's my answer to you. Hopefully that answers your question. Next question. Hi, Dr. Z. I have a question about changing my name. I changed it already. It's now something similar to what my dead name was, but I'm considering changing it to what my mother would have named me if I had been cisgender. How can I figure out if a new name is a good fit? Any kind of insight will help. So this is a great question, not just for you, but for anybody who is thinking about uh, changing their name, who's thinking about uh, trying on a different name. Um, how do you know if it's a good fit for you? you try it out. You ask family, you ask friends, you ask people around, you say, you know what, I'm thinking about legally changing my name and before I can legally commit, I would like to try it out and see if it really resonates, if it really feels connected to me. And would you please use this name and help me uh, figure this out for myself? I can't imagine anybody saying no. Um, it is just a name after all. And after some duration of time, you will know. You will know whether it would feel right or you will know if it just doesn't feel right. Uh, names are one of the things that are so... Names are interesting, actually. They're so specific. Uh, there's a whole... Oh my God, there's whole philosophy about names, how some names are even mean something and represent things. And uh, there's, there's some kind of patterns, patterns about names, but it has to feel right. And you won't know if it feels right unless you will try. You don't want to change your legal name and then change it again, although you can, but what a hassle. Um, better just experiment, explore, um, write around, see what it feels like writing down your name, um, create a email account with that name something that's simple to do and just see what it's like just to get a few emails under the name when you see that name in print what does it feel like so try it out trying out is the best way to find out um, but share below in accounts let us all know what your name is that you um, mom has suggested and um, uh, have, try it out and see how it goes wish you all the best next question what do you or should we say or think about these politicians to claim there are not enough information out there to make a determination that gender dysphoria or gender affirming care is the right thing to do for people who are dealing with this? Part two. Oh, okay, so there's part two question. Uh, how do you respond to politicians who claim that there seems to be an epidemic of people claiming that they're transgender, especially amongst young individuals. So let's answer the first question, okay? This is a great question because it's so relevant to today's time, so relevant to what's going on today in the world. Um, so what do you do and how do you, what do you say or think about the politician that claims there's not enough information about determination the gender for gender for me care is the right thing for people? Um, so... What I personally do, I don't even enter into conversation because these people are not interested in understanding. So the first thing I do is I try to ask myself whether this is a critical conversation, critical debate, or is this is some, or is this is just going to be, you know, I have my agenda and you have to agree with my agenda type of thing. Sadly, with my experience, at least, with majority of politicians or majority of these people who make an anti-trans legislation, 
my experience is that they're not interested in well-being or 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 health care of transgender and non-binary individuals. My experience is that they don't even really care, nor do they even understand what they're doing or talking about. Um, the way I perceive it is that they're utilizing minorities, as they always have, as a way to, to push their political um, agendas, as a way to get ahead in their polls. This is how I see them. The way I know that they don't really care is because they don't even know. Uh, they not critically thinking they are not open to critical information they're not open to research-based information um, so they're just kind of spilling out a, lo a lot of things that are deeply deeply inaccurate because anybody who knows and understands gender dysphoria and gender affirming care and has experience working with transgender individuals firsthand will have a much deeper and much more in-depth understanding so, like I said, I don't even engage in um, in um, in debate with them. I don't even step into that. If you can, if you're not open to reading all the critical, this is like um, uh, that philosopher Judith Butler said: if you're not open to reading all of the critical debate from this side, and I will be open to reading it from your side. We cannot engage in a dialogue. There's no dialogue if you're only sticking to your information. You're not open to any other information. And this is exactly the point of view I hold too. What I can tell you is that um, adults that I work with, especially older adults, demonstrate consistency of gender dysphoria that doesn't go away. I see this clear demonstration by witnessing people who have done everything under the sun to cope with gender dysphoria, including embracing their gender assigned at birth to a T and still not feeling comfortable. People say, why can't you just love your body? Why can't you just love the body that God gave you? I think that's a beautiful concept. I think a lot of us can benefit on working on loving ourselves and our bodies more. However, when it comes to gender dysphoria, it's not a matter about loving your body. It's hard to love something that you feel like doesn't belong to you and something that gives you deep, deep distress. I also know for a fact firsthand from working with clients that once people start taking care of their issues, they start feeling better. Are all of their problems go away? No. Do they still struggle? Yes. But do they feel better? Yes. So this is what I got to say. And if I were to sit down with politicians, they would have to read what I present and I will have to read what they have to present, but they will have to at least be aware of research and understanding. Now, to the part two, how do you respond to politicians who claim that there seems to be an epidemic of people claiming that there's transgender, especially among young individuals? Um, First of all, what I want to say is, why is it so difficult for all of us to acknowledge that, yeah, there could be a huge proportion of individuals who trans? In other words, why are we so desperately clinging to heteronormative binary views? Why are we so strongly clinging to um, male-female-only polarities? Why is it so hard to broaden perspectives that as human beings, as a human species, we're very complex and we have become domesticated, if you will, um, by conditioning of the society that has stifled or restricted a lot of our variability. You know, it's like have to stand in line. Everybody is, you know, standing in line and perform the same set of things and you condition to it while everything on the inside is screaming to raise your arm up when your arm's supposed to be down. So they can claim all they want. We have to look at the facts. We have to look at the data. We have to look at a broader concept. We have to look at understanding gender dysphoria throughout the history and time and understanding how gender dysphoria is susceptible to changes and shifts depending on the context. 
and understanding that the reason why there's more people are coming out today is not only because they have language, as I said in another video, but also because more and more people are becoming aware of who they are. And I think that's a great thing for the humanity. Now, young adults especially are individuals who are starting to understand themselves. So there's a lot of things going on in terms of identity, in terms of autonomy. And when we look at the statistics, we have to realize that there is going to be a spike in terms of young adults who are just questioning or exploring their gender who may still turn out to be cis. And we have to take that into account. And we have to take into account that there's a lot of young adults who are just naturally have predisposition toward trans identity, and that's fine too. So um, I don't have a lot of responses to politicians because I refuse to talk to politicians because, again, there's no if there's no critical dialogue back and forth, what is the point, right? It's just going to be a waste of my time. Um, my question is, why we're still clinging to to the binaries? I mean, I have my answer and how it is embedded in all of our institutions, but we even cling to the no notion of nature law. People click to notions of nature laws that God created man and woman and that there is. Nature law is not science, people. I mean, it's just not. It's not, nature law is not a fact. Um, you may have a strong, strong faithful and religious beliefs and strongly believe uh, that God existed or exists. Um, and that's fine. That's okay. Strong personal beliefs are not the same thing as facts. And nature law is not a fact. So, yeah. I don't have much to say, and um, I'm just very, very disappointed in humanity. I'm very disappointed in human beings who take a position of being public figures in a political office and who don't even attempt to understand, to learn, to educate themselves, who just are uh, very quick to weaponize things in order to promote um, their own their own agenda and um it's unfortunate so that's all i gotta say I, I wish i had a better answer but i'm i'm very strict of who i engage with in dialogue with because i just know that some minds you're not going to change because they're not entering conversation with attempt to change their mind so final question for today Hello, doctors. And my question for you is, why our trans identity has to be something to be concealed and hid from other people? What a painful question to segue from just politics. Why is there a lot of insecurities or not being respected and accepted by the people around us? This really breaks my heart. It truly does. Um, your trans identity should never be something to be concealed from everybody else you shouldn't conceal who you are now i know a lot of you feel like you need to conceal it for safety reasons totally understand totally understand it's not insecurities that i think is the problem with people who are not respectful or and it's not even acceptance you know like I said, I really think the world is not that that unaccepting. I think there's a lot of people in the world who just genuinely don't really care. Um, and there's a lot of people who do care deeply about all of you. And then there's a lot of people in the world who really want to um, eliminate your rights. And I don't think they want to eliminate your rights because they're insecure. I think that they want to eliminate your rights because when we as human beings get really small and what I mean by small is when we as human beings get very um, when we're not living our lives, when we're not working on ourselves, we're not working on assertiveness toward ourselves, we're not working on uh, bettering ourselves, and we're not working on expanding ourselves as human beings. We become small in a sense of um, 
not really living our lives and that leaves a lot of room for bitterness it leaves a lot of room for anger it leaves a lot of room for hate it leaves a lot a lot of room for a lot of other things every single person who commented some negative hateful things on my channel and i'm not talking about people who have genuinely uh, questions of trying to understand but i'm talking about people who are blatantly clearly hateful just hateful about trans people hateful about people like me who try to help trans people every time i see those comments i think to myself what kind of person just think about it what kind of person would take time out of their day and my god we all have such limited time take time out of their day do that go online and look up channels and the content that they already know bothers them irritates them annoys them so not only are they exposing themselves to the material that makes them crawl under their skin but then they actively take time to go on the channel and have their verbal diarrhea and spill things out when i think about what type of people would do it i think about my god well it's got to be people who don't really have their life together because if you have your life together you're too busy living your life i'm sorry you're too busy living if there's a lot of things a lot of content i don't agree with or makes me crawl under my skin but you know what i'm too busy to be honest to give them my two cents and to go on the channel and to comment why even bother you don't like it pass on so i think about this is a person who my god has no life must really not like themselves must really not like the world must really not like people and it's somebody who feels small and powerless so when they leave the nasty comment they feel oh my god i just let her know how i think and what i feel and um oh i'm so happy and i'm in control and i'm powerful she's gonna read it and it's gonna ruin her day that's sad that is sad that is so so fucking sad i mean jesus get a life get a fucking life this is the type of people that i it's not insecurities even it's just small small some people refuse to be big some people refuse to grow because they're afraid if they grow they're afraid oh my god everything they've been small about may turn out to be wrong and if i grow i can be a better person and then i have to acknowledge that i've been small by the way we've all been small some of us bullet kids in school some of us said some shitty stuff to somebody we all experience being small right the key is, do you stay being small or do you grow? And some people don't want to grow and you can't change them. And my advice is try not to let them influence your life. Trust that there's so many of us that want you to be big. There's so many of us that are rooting for you. There's so many of us, cis and trans and non-binary and you name it regardless of gender orientation and conservative and also religious and liberal and non-religious all across the board who want people to grow big who want people to have rights don't let few small ones to shut you down i know it feels like those few small ones can really shut you down i i totally get it trust me i do i get it on at least very small scale I mean, not Garrett and a magnitude that you have it, but I do get it. I do get it. I mean, there was one time where, you know, I, I got so much shit on one of the platforms from from small people. Even for me, it became really hard. I, I started to second guess. Do I really want to keep putting myself out there? S small smallness and small people. The reason why they feel powerful to us, to you and I and everybody else, it, it, powerful in the sense that it's affecting us, is because negativity is the void that can suck you in. Please don't let it suck you in. I know it's hard, but don't conceal who you are. If safety is an issue, I totally understand. If safety is not an issue, don't conceal who you are. There's a lot of people 
that are there rooting for you. So that's what I got to say. Uh, I just... As a psychologist, I still can't fathom some people. I can't fathom so many people's behaviors. And and it just, um, you know, it's so hard to elevate. To elevate yourself or to elevate somebody else takes work. It takes work. To help elevate somebody else, you have to show up for them. And that's not easy. But you know what? To build yourself up on somebody else by taking somebody else down or to build yourself up by tearing somebody down, that takes nothing. We can all tear somebody down with our words. I can tear somebody down by just saying something nasty. That's the power of the words. But to be able to, to control your power of the words and to choose to elevate yourself on others versus breaking and destroying everybody around you that's that takes integrity that takes humanity that takes kindness and that's what i choose to believe in and i choose to believe that the world is full far more with those people who are all about elevating themselves and others than those who are so small that they try to feed off by breaking everybody around them so Kind of, um, God, I just, makes me want to cry right now. Uh, passionate Q&A. Thank you so much, everybody, for your questions. Please feel free to ask me, um, uh, list your questions below in the comment section or email them to me directly. I always love hearing from you and comment below, share what you think. And if any of you are experts at Ligatech webcam for Mac computer and can tell me why am I getting flushed out? Is it because window is in front of me and a white wall behind me? Please let me know because it is driving me ballistics. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye.